bit of a diversion from my usual projects today. Today I'm actually hoping to fix a problem on my Volvo V50 daily, which we're sat in at the moment. Um, I've been really pleased with this car, it's been a, a fantastic daily whilst I've owned it. I've been using it for just over a year now. And finally it's had its first problem. The problem is headlamp failure service required has come up on the dash. And a further symptom to that is when it's dark, the headlights do not adjust at all and they go to the lowest position so you, you can see like two meters in front of you and as we're getting towards winter now it's about time i fixed that so i'll be able to see when i'm on my commute etc i've looked up the um pro the symptoms online on various forums to see if i can work out what the problem is without reading the codes or anything like that uh, and you, you read a lot of horror stories on the forums for example the very expensive Xenon headlights, which are nearly a thousand pound a side new, uh, and people are saying it can quite often be a situation where you have to replace those to fix it. Really hoping that's not the case with this car because it's you know doesn't really fit in with my Banganomics daily driver ethos. It's a very high mile car, this, and uh, it's been good to me so far. So hopefully that keeps going. Um, other other thoughts are headlight level sensors, which are attached to the suspension under the car. I think there's one at the front and the back, and if one of these fails that can cause this to flag up and shut the whole system down. Um, so hopefully that'll be the problem and we'll be able to fix it. So to save myself from running around like a headless chicken and trying to replace expensive parts without really knowing what the problem is, uh, I decided to try and read the codes using one of those cheap apps on a mobile and a cheap OBD2 reader. Unfortunately, it seems that you can't get sensible codes through one of those apps for this car, which is quite annoying. It turns out you need something called Vida and a cable that works with Vida, which is Volvo's own software to read the codes. Um, so what I've done is I've picked myself up a Windows 7 laptop uh, with Vida pre-installed on it from eBay, which was a, a real plus, and obviously the, the cable you need to plug into the OBD2, which is just under the steering wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the codes and hopefully get some sensible direction on what parts actually failed so we can fix it. I figured this could be very useful for people with the same problem because I suspect it's fairly common. So before I go any further, because uh, I know this will be a sticking point for most people, I'll try and put links down in the description to buy the, the right cable, uh, maybe even download the software to try it yourself, or even buy a package like I've bought. There seems to be a guy on eBay that seems to sell packages. It's fairly expensive to do. Uh, the cable alone, I think, was 130 last time I looked. But if you have a Volvo that you're trying to keep going, this has got to be cheaper than taking it to the dealer to get the code read. Once you've got Vida all installed, there'll be a service running in the background which turns from red to yellow to green uh, when it's running. Now it's running, so we're ready to use it. The software we're going to be using, and there's a couple of things Vida installs, is Vida all in one. This is what we're going to actually use to read the codes. So first things first, let's get the OBD2 plugged into the car, which is just underneath the steering wheel. Turn the ignition to position two. We'll plug in the USB and get this running. So first we need to log in, and username one here. Depends on where you've installed it from, but there'll usually be instructions on that. Right, so when we're logged in, um, you need to define vehicle profile to make sure it's got the correct vehicle. If you press read vehicle, and your cable works, then hopefully it should mostly figure this out itself. That's great, so we need to change this because we're in a different region. And then press OK. Right, so to read the codes, we need to go to Diagnostics, which is on the top tab. So this can usually take a few minutes. Um, but it's what it's doing is communicating with all the different modules in the car to read the codes. So let's give it just a minute. Okay, so now that's finished, it's left us with a page that's got all of the vehicle configuration, but that's not really what we're interested in at the moment. We're interested in fault trace, which is again at the top. Okay, so straight away, we've got this code that's come up for us, HCM B104312, 
front axle sensor, general electrical failures, circuit short to battery. That seems to indicate to me quite clearly that it's going to be the front headlight level sensor on the suspension, which is fantastic news. It's not a headlight. So if we switch over to the delivery page, this should give us all the fault codes for the car. I'm not sure why it's on a different page, but it is. Let that load for a moment. Ah, so it looks like we've got we've got more codes than I expected there. Some injector codes as well. We'll ignore those for now because the car seems to seems to run really well. Um, and I think this is related to the interior lights. The previous owners changed them all out to LEDs, which is which is probably why the signal's too low. So we'll ignore that too. So we're really interested in this one. So now we, we've actually got a code and a description of what the problem is, front axle sensor. Uh, I'm going to go and look this up online and probably have a look at the sensor on the car, make sure there's nothing stupid going on, such as the plug's dropped off, um, and then probably order new parts if it calls for it, and then we'll reconvene to fit those and see if we can fix this problem. So after I read the codes, I had a quick look at the sensor on the car and it looked pretty crusty to be honest. So I went ahead and ordered myself a, a known good second-hand sensor, which I'm just going to swap in now. So the old one does look a bit crusty. One of the screws is missing, although it doesn't seem to move, so I'm not sure that'll be the problem really. But as it says short circuit on the codes, I suspect it's just failed. So I'm gonna throw the new one in. Well, what I'm gonna do actually is unplug this one and plug the new one in and see if the codes disappear before I start bolting it in fully. Before we plug Vida back in, let's just see if the light comes on the dash when we turn the ignition. <laughs> the only one we've got is fill washer fluid. Other than that, the other code's not there, which is um, very promising. Let's plug Vida in just to make sure. I've just scanned the codes on Vida again, and the great news is that front axle sensor code is completely gone now it's totally disappeared we're continuing to ignore the interior lighting signal to low code um, but so far so good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach that sensor in properly throw the other one in the bin and um, take the car for a drive make sure it really is fixed but so far so good I've been driving the car for a few days now and it's not come back which is a great sign the thing's no longer flashing I'm quite confident the problem's solved um, so if you've enjoyed this video why not give us a subscribe give us a thumbs up and join us next time thanks for watching